This is looking like blue. We created our very own DIY animatronic dinosaur, and this series of videos tells you exactly how we did it. Having completed the base structure, eyes, and animatronics, this video focuses on all things skin, molding, sculpting, and integrating with the animatronics. So, now we're gonna cover this thing, this whole thing, in foam clay. What is foam clay, I hear you shout? It is this, this stuff here, and it has the craziest, weirdest consistency. Look at this. <laughs> It looks like the kind of stuff that would come dribble out of the mouth of an alien in the Aliens franchise. It's a little bit like slime. So the plan is to do a light covering on the whole of this with the foam clay, and then use that to start to build some of the structure and the uh, bumps and humps and lumps. So let's do it, Blue. Let's get on it. I wanted to point out some of the interesting properties of this foam clay. It is, it is really hard to work with. Um, it doesn't work like clay or like you would expect clay to work. And as you can see, there's this kind of dripping, running kind of look to it. And so um, what you have to remember is it's going to kind of settle and lose its definition over time. And so what I'm starting to do is add things with slightly more definition. So if you see here, like on the nostrils, that's slightly more definition than I need. And around the edge of the mouth and here over the, uh, the eyes. I'm just rolling up uh, little balls of, of the clay and um, popping them in all the way along there. And I might actually do a little bit more of that uh, to um, kind of create scales or the look of scales. And then I'll go in afterwards with um, some kind of tool like this and make some more indentations. And the good thing about this foam clay is you can actually, when it's completely dry, you can sand it, you can use a Dremel on it, you can uh, score it just like you could with a normal type of foam. So uh, it will give me a second chance to kind of go in and, and do those things. Okay, <laughs> I'm blinking because it's very, very late at night. I had to keep going because if you don't keep going, um, this stuff dries. Or at least the surface of it does. I am very pleased with the work on this. We actually have a raptor. It's looking awesome. Amazing. I am so exhausted, uh, but so pleased. That is a good, I was gonna say day's work. Good day and a night's work. It's looking good. It's looking like the pictures. have to do some clay sculpting of the, the two raptor eyes because those eyes are going to need a latex covering to enable the eyes to open and close. What I have got to figure out is how I add the latex piece to the foam clay and make them match. That's something I've not done ever. So I've not done any of this ever. What am I talking about? This is all new to me. You're joining me on this experience of experimenting. Anyway, back to the point. <laughs> which is this. I'm going to 3D print the eyelids again so that I can use them as the base for me putting clay on top to sculpt what the eyes will look like because I want whatever I'm going to create to fit over the eyes pretty closely. Okay, it printed. Very rough, very rough print, but that is good enough for me to do my clay work. I made these 5% smaller than the ones in real life so I can coat them with something. So what I'm gonna do is mount this with hot glue to uh, this piece of wood, and then put clay on top of it. So, ready to go. That was a lot more fun than everything else I've done today. And that took, I don't know. I mean, it's not, it's not perfect, perfect, but it's pretty good. Here we are. As you can see, my eyelid is dry. 
Uh, as I'm not going to do a full mold, I'd have to take the reverse of this and then do another one. And because I'm making the whole structure from foam, I'm going to do a very thin paint over this uh, with latex. I made the relief of it deeper than it should be, so that when I paint the latex over it, the latex will fill some of these holes, but you'll still see the bumps and stuff. And so I'm hoping that just taking the reverse of this and using that straight is going to work. That's the plan. I'm taking some just regular liquid latex, a bit of black paint. I'm going to mix the two together. And then I'm going to use a brush that I don't care is going to get ruined uh, to paint that onto this. There are these magnets I pre-placed. So I'm going to put this in position and then I'm going to put magnets, literally just drop them on and stick them in position so I know where they need to go. All right, so there we go. So I've done the first few and all you do is just take the magnet like this. You find a spot where there is one and then you hold it near, near there and there it goes, it just sticks in position. And so you're gonna do that all the way around this and then what I do is then cover these with latex, um, a few layers of which will then help to hold those in position and then obviously cut off this messy edge around here. Now the eyes are mainly completed. It's time to put the first coat of paint on this and I'm gonna put a wash coat. I've mixed up a bit of paint and water, uh, some thicker paint here at the top, uh, waterier stuff down there. And it's gonna paint this on. And then what I'm gonna do is as I paint, I'm gonna rub it off. Uh, so I'm leaving stuff just in the crevices. So kind of like this and put this on over here. And then I'm gonna rub it off like that but then it leaves it in the gap. So paint it on and then kind of rub it off. So much fun, I love it. <laughs> right, now that base is done, I'm just going in here in these little gaps where I want it darker and literally just hand painting. And it's just, just working at it, working at it, doing a bit, taking a step back. Is that working the way I want to? Maybe it isn't, maybe it is. And just keep working on it, working on it, working on it. Because now we put that wash over it. <clears throat> now what we're trying to do is bring out the areas purposefully that we want to bring out and, and drop the ones back we've done. Now that the black is done, and I'm gonna go over with the green. Now it's gonna look a little bit fake to begin with this green, but it's gonna help pull out that color. Cause if you look at the um, the original color for blue, it's kind of like, a, there's actually quite a lot of aqua and other bluey greeny colors mixed in. And what you'll notice I'm doing is I'm just brushing on these highlight pieces here, just to bring out the, the bumps. What we're trying to do is build up layers of color here um, that will result in the final look. And what you'll notice is that this green is kind of sitting on top of that black that we've already done. And depending on the angle and the light, you see it more or less. And that is exactly what we want. I started doing the stripes, the kind of the basis of the blue stripes with my airbrush. So let's do a little bit of airbrushing to add some highlights in on the top. And as you can see, height in this area here. So just got a little airbrush, a little bit of uh, white acrylic paint that I've watered down, and we're gonna go for it.
looking like blue. <laughs> That's great. I'm so pleased. I think this head is finished. Now I've got to finish the muzzle and the other bits, but I'm pretty sure that we can um, put this in situ. So excited. I've been saying that a lot, but it's true. I am excited. This is flipping awesome. It's, it's great. In the next video, I cover building the stock to hold the Raptor in containment, as well as the final finishing touches to our animatronic model. Click on the video link below to watch now. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button below and hit the notify bell. It helps me make more of these videos and means you get notified when we share our next exciting adventure.